Wednesday Martin, the author of Stepmoms, or welcome to the show. Thank you. In your book, you said that stepmothers are under the radar. What do you mean by that? Stepmothers are under the radar in so many ways. Let's start with the numbers, for example. Astonishingly, we don't even know how many stepmothers there are in the United States. The most frequently cited figure is 15 to 20 million stepmothers. However, experts agree that number is likely very low. And that's because of the way the U.S. Census counts step families. What they say is you're a step parent if you live full time with your stepchild. Now we know that mom is overwhelmingly likely to get custody after a divorce. So what ends up happening is that stepmothers are undercounted while stepfathers who live full time with their stepchildren more often are counted. There's a further wrinkle in this story, which is that even though stepmothers are officially part time, residency in step families tends to be very fluid and dynamic. Unlike first families where people stay in one place, in step families kids go back and forth between households. What does this mean? That a woman who's officially a part-time stepmother might very well be a full-time stepmother. And yet we don't know how many of them there are. Now certainly we need to start by figuring out how many stepmothers there are, but we need to go way beyond that. There's a pretty good body of literature about the experiences and realities of stepfathers and stepchildren, and we need to develop a comparable body of literature about stepmothers. And this is especially imperative because the role of the stepmother is arguably the most difficult one in the step family. In fact, you write about the difficulties you had in your first year as married to a man with two teen girls. There's a story about garbage bags. Yes, there is. I'm not particularly proud of it, but it is instructive. One day I had asked my teenage stepdaughter to clean up her room what felt like a hundred times. And when she ignored me and walked out of the house, in a fury, I took all the things that were on her bedroom floor, put them in garbage bags, and hurled the garbage bag down the stairs toward the front door. Now, I wasn't proud of myself, and in fact, I was consumed with self-recrimination and self-hatred the second I did it. I've since learned that this is a really typical story. Any parent will typically get extremely frustrated when they feel that their child isn't listening to them. But for the stepmother, it's a different story. Here's what's different about it. First of all, a mother will say, I had a bad day, but we'll get over this. For a stepmother, the bond between her and her stepchild is much more fragile. It's newer and it's more insecure. So when there's a rough patch, it feels even rougher. Secondly, a mother might say, I'm a bad mother that I did this, and quickly catch herself and say, I'm a person having a bad day. A stepmother who does something like what I did, on the other hand, is likely to say, it's happening. I've become a wicked stepmother. I promised that I would never do this, that this would never happen to me, and now here I am a stepmonster. And for women who are trying their best, this feels like a terrible personal and interpersonal failure. I want to help women with stepchildren understand that it's normal to feel fed up and frustrated, that it's normal to be sick of being rejected by your stepchild, and it's even normal to lose your temper, and that we don't have to sink into self-loathing. We can take some very concrete steps to feel better about ourselves and to improve our relations with our stepchildren. Wednesday Martin, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me.